A recent question that we had on our discussion board is how do we draw a box plot where we have groups? And the following image was shown where you see there's actually three different groups of data that's represented here. And the x-axis shows you which groups they are. This is um, data that I managed to search on and found the data set online by kind of searching on these keywords. I'll put the link to this data in the uh, description of the video, but basically you can take the data here and you can see where I found this online. I'm just going to select all of this data and then I'll go ahead and copy it and paste it into data graph and show you how to create a graph like the one you saw there. And there we go. Here's all the data. And to make this easier, one thing that I often like to do is to go to the file, do shift command four, um, to, just sorry to, to copy this image, and then we'll go ahead and paste it into the data graph file. So I make a new graph for composition. This just gives me a clean slate that I can paste an image into. There we go. So there's the image I copied. Just um, simple screenshot. So anyway, this just makes it easier to uh, for me when I'm doing something like this to be able to um, again have this image handy. I'm just scaling this here so you can see uh, see the full image and just change the sizing here. So um, so now what we're going to do is to use this as a basis for again creating a similar image within data graph. Notice the y-axis is um, a highway column, HWY, and the x-axis is this DRV column. Um, but what we really see, again, are these, are these three groups. And the notation is here uh, indicating which actual class of, of car these are, each one of these corresponds to, these boxes. So there's really these two categories. There's the class category and the drive category, and then there's the highway data that we're going to use for the box plots. So the, the next thing that I want to do is actually, let's go ahead and start by creating, um, using these columns to create the actual box plots. Again, the drive, the class, and the highway data are the three columns that we're going to use. Go ahead and go to a new graph and have the highway column selected it's kind of a short way to do this. Click on the box um, plot shortcut, and now we have one single box plot that's just for that, um, for all the data. It's not grouped at all. So the first thing that I can do here is I can go ahead again. I'm going to group this by class. So we'll start just with this first, first grouping. This is the position option within the box plot, and I can just click and drag, actually, the menu um, from the header as I did there. Now you can see all these different uh, box plots that are shown and the x-axis indicates the class of car that the um, highway miles are corresponding to. So the other thing I want to do here is I want to add this colored fill and use a colored scheme similar to the graph that we started with uh, that we're kind of mimicking here. So we'll color um, once we say fill with color scheme then we can select create color scheme and that green arrow will show you the color scheme variable that's created. If you've ever done this with the points command, uh, it actually automatically fills the colors for you. Here we need to click the gear menu and say unique text values. Um, that will go ahead and then populate all the different categories for us. If you click the gear menu one more time, then you can select from all these different color schemes and color suggestions that we have built in. Um, we're going to fix this in the next, well, maybe not fix it, but add the functionality in the next version of Data Graph so it will populate this automatically for you much easier with the box command in the same way it does with the points command for doing the color scheme. Anyway, so now we have a graph that has a color scheme and has each, each of the box plots shown for you. Um, so the next thing is going to be we want to clone this graph 
so that we can then modify it. So I click that little button to create a copy that we can then work with to do this additional grouping. Now there isn't a, a second grouping level within the command itself, um, but rather what we're going to do is use a mask to filter the data uh, and create three different box commands. So again, if we go back to our original graph uh, and sort of break this down, this is what I always do when I'm uh, looking at graphs and saying, how do I make this within data graph? Uh, here's the you know, this side is one box command, then the middle is a second box, com box command, and then we have a third. So really, this graph in the data graph way of thinking is a three-paneled graph where we have three different box commands uh, that vary according to that variable on the x-axis. So here what we're going to do, again, is use a mask. So if we expand our box command, um, we have a use as mask option, and we can now use this column of data, the drive column, um, and we can. this is a menu that we can click on, or you can, again, just click on the header and populate that menu by dragging and dropping. Um, we need to now select what we want this value to be. So there's this additional menu where we say we want it when DRV matches and type in a four, and now we get the boxes that correspond to that first panel of graphs using the box and whisker uh, graphic that data graph has built in. So the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to split this into two more panels. So I'll go to my axis settings and click split X two times, and that's going to give me these two additional panels. And now on every command, I have the selector where I can change where this box plot is drawn to. Um, so this is not, you know, it's not hard to do. Um, now we can go ahead and take the command we already have. And again, we don't need to start from scratch. We're going to make a copy of this command. Uh, you can do that from the edit menu, as you see here, edit paste, um, or use the command C, command V, uh, shortcuts. But in any case, now I have three box commands. They are all across uh, these different panels. And now I just want to modify the masks on these other two commands in order to go ahead and appropriately specify which data I want in each one of these panels. So I'll go ahead and change this first one to F, and then the last one will be R. And now we're getting you know closer and closer to the graphic that we are um, working to create something similar here. So um, the you'll notice how the x-axis here we are showing on this graph all of the classes across, but in the graphic that we're sort of mimicking, we don't see all that now. Um, I'm going to show you after this how to actually have the classes in there and, and some approach for that. But for now, let's just go ahead and um, we'll add a, a title to the bottom of this to show these additional categories that are dividing our data. And I'm using a text command in order to do that. So I just created one text command. Again, I'm moving it to the different panels and now modifying it to show these categories for each one. There we go. Um, you might want to change the font size on these to make them a little bigger so we can go into the style settings. These text commands uses what's known as the label font. So if I change all of the label font to be a little bit bigger, then I go ahead and have all of those um, text labels I just added be larger. Again, I'm not showing the class in the graph that I'm mimicking, and you can do the same thing here. If you didn't want to repeat that over and over again, you can uncheck the draw X numbers on all of the access settings, and then you'll only see that label between each one of these graphs. Now, the other thing we need to do here is add a custom legend. So I do that under the command menu, and this custom legend will allow us then to show the color scheme. So the color scheme variables do um, require you to add in this 
custom legend to show the color scheme variable here. I'm just selecting the variable. Uh, I didn't give it a name, so I might as well go ahead and, and name this one variable uh, based on the class column here again. So we'll call this color scheme class. There we go. And I can change the location of this color scheme to also be on the right side of my graph. And I can also anchor it into the center of that right side. Also, if you don't want a border, easy enough to remove that as well. So now we have a graph that's really getting very close to this original one that we started with here. There are the um, X additional X label and Y title, uh, or uh, yeah, X title and Y title that we have shown. Here I can just go ahead and type in the Y title for the main axis. In terms of the um, X titles, well, I used, uh, I could have typed them in the, the main X title location, but instead I used text commands. There's a reason for that, but anyway, to, to add in one more label down below, I can go ahead and make a copy of one of these existing text commands. Go ahead and paste that in. Now I have one more text command, and these all have offsets that just have this slider that I can use to go ahead and change that. Whoops. If you actually double click on any of these text labels directly on the graph, you can go ahead and edit them. And for this one, um, again, there you see now this is this is very close to to this original graph. Now you might want to size this to, to the specific size that you want to output here. Uh, when you do that, then again, you might need to adjust some of the fonts. We'll go ahead and also make the font size for my yeah, there we go for the uh, the, the width of the legend again actually make that a little bit smaller and move this around. So um, I think this is looking pretty good. Here, we'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see this. There we go. So one of the things that I will say sort of bothers me about this graph is that the boxes themselves have different widths within each category. So the categories have a consistent width, which means since we have in some of the categories more uh, types of classes that the individual boxes are not the same width. Now that's the same thing in the original graph that we uh, are mimicking here, but the um, in data graph we can scale each one of these windows in order to appropriately get a uh, the <laughs> sorry get the box in each one of these panels to be the same width. So if you go into your axis settings, this is something that you can change. There's this relative sizing um, that is very useful for something like this. Um, now I think actually what I'll do here is go ahead and let's Yeah, I think what I'll do here is go ahead and we can close the um, data list on the left and go ahead and click on this swap button that's at the bottom of the data table in order to go ahead and get a little more room so you can maybe see this a little bit better. So I have my two axis settings. I can highlight them, use a right arrow key to just open them both up. and. Now what I want to do is notice this width option. So this is a relative scale that as I change it, it will change the width of either of my additional panels relative to the main panel. And remember the main panel is the one that's on the left hand side. That's always going to be the, um, the, 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 the way that this is scaled. You're always scaling to that one on the left. And now, Notice how there's this one dot here and a line. Uh, so this is kind of hard to see actually in the original and it took me a while to realize this, that actually there's five different categories here. This one uh, class actually only has one data point in it. So it doesn't show up as a box plot. But anyway, since the main one has five and the one in the middle has four, I use a four fifths ratio to scale these so that they have this, the boxes have the same width. Um, again, here's the main axis. 
that I'm comparing to that has five different boxes. Now if we look to the one all the way on the right, this has three boxes. Uh, and so to scale this appropriately, I can put three fifths in the width. And now all of my boxes in my box plot have the same width. Personally, I really like that. I think that um, looks nice. And I think that's a more appropriate representation um, in terms of helping to really see all the data clearly and to helping to differentiate between them. Again, here you see how all of these classes, um, the way, since there's different amount of classes for each one, you see how they're, it, they're different sizes. So here, if we wanted though to show the class, um, we can go ahead and add that back in. So I just want you to kind of think about, again, the fact that really each of these boxes is representing a class. And if I add that back in, then I'm probably going to also want to um, change the orientation of the X tick marks so that I can see these labels. So uh, this is easy enough to do. Each one of these uh, X tick mark options has a way to rotate it and they sort of snap into place. So I have to do this three times, but it's pretty easy to get them to snap where I want them to be. Now notice I have these other labels, the 4, F, and the R. Those are now being hidden by my uh, rotated uh, axis labels here. That's not a problem. I can change where I put those. Uh, for example, I sort of like actually having them shown above each of the graphs. I think that's a way to really see them a little bit clearer and um, yeah, there you go. Now, another thing I will need to do here is align these properly. Um, maybe make this font a little bit smaller too. But now if I go back to my text commands, the to have them centered within each group, I'm going to need to um, a lot change the align on them. So first here, let's just give these some better names so that I can actually um, and so the graph is again a bit more understandable and yeah go ahead and change this alignment to center Oop, and here's the last one there we go yeah so I think that looks that looks uh, that looks much better and is a little bit clearer in terms of having the labels like this now if you remove that label on the bottom that's actually sort of uh, helping to buffer the space there for those um, labels that I've added. Um, I can also, if you if you don't have that additional label there, it's easy enough to go into any of the axis settings and there's a space for Y, uh, sorry, space for X in this case option. You can change that to give more space or change it to exactly and then adjust this and uh, to you know, where it looks, where you think it looks good. I always like to kind of just highlight all of my commands, use command A and a left arrow to kind of collapse them down at the end. So it's just to sort of keep this neat. And I think that this graph, uh, I think this looks nice. I think this is a nice representation. Um, here in my legend, I might want to make the legend size of the font a little bit smaller. I can do that specifically by going into here and just where it says, yeah, there you go, the font at the bottom, make that a little bit smaller. The last thing I want to show you is a different option for how the panels are represented. Here you see one box around the whole thing, but I sort of like to have a different style. You can access the box style by right clicking or control clicking your, your mouse right on the graph. This is also in the style settings, but you can see box style, axis box, and then you get a box around each one of the panels. Anyway, this is a look that I like. I think it makes it very clear as to what corresponds to which group. Um, but if, if you prefer it the other way, uh, you can do that too. So anyway, I hope that this was helpful for you. We're going to have this example file in our online examples that you can access from within Datagraph. And any other questions you have uh, or issues, as always, let us know.